word of God, amen, in the book of Psalms, amen, the book of Psalms. We've been in the book of Psalms a couple of weeks, but this is a uh, one of the, uh, certainly, uh, the, the book of Psalms known as the hymn book of the Bible, but also uh, many of them were, uh, they were sang uh, as prayers, and so we want to lift this particular very familiar passage of scripture up, Psalms, the 34th number of Psalms. Amen. A 34th number of Psalms. Amen. We're going to, uh, we're going to focus our sermonic spotlight on those first four verses. And uh, when you have it, see, I have it. Amen. I'm just going to read those first four verses, but I want you to uh, go back and read that whole uh, Psalms. This is what it says. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast, in her, a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse 3 says this. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, yes. And let us exalt his name together. Amen. Verse 4 says, I sought the Lord. Anybody seeking the Lord? And he heard me and he delivered me. From all of my fears. Amen, amen, amen. I want to tag this text this morning. Tell God thank you anyway. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Let the church say, tell God thank you anyway. My brothers and my sisters, the text is tailored to teach us an officer Christological outline. A story is told by a mother about her oldest son, who asked her if she, his mother, could do something for him. At the moment he made the request, his mother actually couldn't fulfill his request. So she told her son, his wide-eyed little 11-year-old boy, and looked at him and said, I would be happy, son, to do what you've asked me to do, but I, I can't do it right now. Upon hearing his mother's reply, he said, okay, mommy, and began to walk away. Then he turned back around and added, but thank you anyway. Oh, my brothers and my sisters. You see, his mother looked at him because she said, well, he's a you know, mild-mannered young man. He's, he's always been a nice chi a child. But and she said, thank you anyway. It touched her heart. It said to her that he really appreciated his mother because he knew that whatever she could do for him, she would be willing to do it. With, with a smile, instantly, this mother's heart was worn because of how her son looked upon her. I don't know, my brothers and my sisters, can we have that same attitude when the Lord doesn't grant our request immediately? Can somebody in this house say, thank you, Lord, anyway? There was a song out many years ago that sang, said, hallelujah, anyhow. Anybody got to thank you, Lord, anyway? Even though things are not like I want, exactly like I want, just like I want it. And, and yes, Lord, I know I'm asking some things. And just because you don't come right now, you know he said, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And I don't know, my brothers and sisters, I'm not going to be before you very long this morning, but I just want to come this morning and lift up this word, this brief word, talking about, thank you, Lord, anyway. This is the Thanksgiving season, but my brothers and sisters, all throughout this year, we've gone through some troubles, and we've gone through some trials. We've gone through, some have been sick, some have been shut in, we've lost loved ones, but I want to know, is there anybody in the house who can say, thank you, Lord, anyway? Thank you, even though I lost a loved one. Thank you, even though I lost a job. Thank you, even though I had COVID. Some of us had COVID, didn't even know we had it. Thank you, Lord, anyway. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. You know, I'm in Bible territory when I talk like this. For well, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 18 says, that Paul says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God 
in Christ Jesus. Now, I, I, now I want to make sure you understand. He didn't say that you're going to say in uh, because of everything, but he said in everything. You see, there's some things that happen. I'm not thankful for it happening, but I'm thankful in it. Are y'all hearing me this morning? In that situation, in that bad circumstance, I'm thankful because God has been faithful. If anybody know God has been faithful, I'm going to say thank you. David said in our text in Psalms, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I love this psalm, especially because of what David was going through when he wrote it. Can I teach it before I preach it? You understand that this particular psalm was written while David was going through something. Of David, when the, he changed his behavior, the Bible says, before Abimelech, and so that he drove him out and he went away. David had been in the enemy's camp. David, so what does this sentence say? Well, unlike some psalms that do not really clearly indicate when they were written, this psalm actually says and points to exactly when it was written under the circumstance. You can also read over in 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter, when David was on the run trying to preserve his life from a jealous King Saul. When he entered the story, we read that David was desperate for food. He, he, was, he was desperate for protection. So he went to a place called Nob. Read your Bible. Once there, he, he asked Abimelech, the priest, to allow him to eat of the holy bread, also known as showbread, and the bread of presence, but that was set aside as a sacrifice to God. For his own safety, David, my brothers and sisters, I uh, also asked Abimelech to give him the sword that he used to kill Goliath. Read your Bible. He, 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 he said, give me that sword. The priest complied with both requests. But after David left and went to Achish, the king of Gath, the king of Gath, this is the same king that was over Goliath, the same giant that he slew. So he, here, here he was going into the enemy's camp uh, and he, he was recognized, the king recognized uh, and he, he revered this warrior which was, uh, was terrified David. It, it, it terrified David to conceal his identity when he found out that they knew exactly who he was. You see, my brothers and sisters, even the enemies, they look at you, they recognize who you are. They recognize that you are kingdom citizen. You recognize, but here he changed his behavior. David began to pretend like he was a madman. The Bible says he, he started to he started act crazy. He began to drool at the mouth. This man who God had promised to be the king someday, he was relegated to a wilderness, living in and out of caves. He was drooling. This same David, the Bible said David was a man after God's own. This was David who had been anointed to be king. To understand, he was anointed, but then yet was not appointed. Are y'all hearing me this morning? There's a difference in anointing and the appointed. David had been anointed to be king, but it was 15 years before David. David actually took the throne. He, and so I'm saying something to somebody so right now. God has maybe anointed you to do something, but God said there's a waiting period. But in the midst of this, David went through this. David went through trouble and trials. And I'm talking to somebody this morning. I don't know who I'm talking to. You going through something right now. You've been there, and all of us have been someplace in some situation. He looked like he was out. He didn't look like who he really was. He didn't look like who God had called him to be. But there he was. And when David realized he went hiding in a cave isolated David while he was in the cave recognizing that it was the Lord who, who had placed that thought in his mind it was God who allowed him to get out of that situation are y'all hearing me and you know there were some situations some circumstances that you and I have been in and it was nobody but God that got you out of that there was nobody, you, you may have had to act in a way that you was not uh, uh, normally would have acted, but God allowed you to get out of it. And so David pins this particular Psalms and he says, I will bless the Lord. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I will bless the Lord. David said, when my enemies pursue me, I'll bless the Lord. David was saying, when I'm hungry, I'll bless the Lord. David said, when times get hard, I will bless. Does anybody, and I'm sick, I will bless the Lord. When my enemies seem to be triumphant, David said, I will bless the Lord. 
So I want to encourage this very simple word this morning. Let's be like David. Whatever you're going through. Whatever you got to deal with. My young people, my children. Whatever is going through in your life. Even though things aren't perfect. Even though things are not like you like them to be. You know, sometimes we say, I'm only going to be happy when my happenings are happening. But the question is, can you say, I bless the Lord in the midst of it? I bless the Lord. I bless his holy name. So I'm going to lift up these few points. I'm going to soon sit down. The first thing that seems to be saying in this particular text, this pericope of God, is that praising God is proprietary. It's proprietary. Meaning that it's relating to an owner of ownership. In other words, we got to own our own praise. It, it can't be about mama or daddy. It can't be about somebody else. Listen, you ought to own your praise. Because you got to recognize your praise is about what God has done for you. It, it doesn't matter what. Because people don't know what he's done for you. He don't know. You don't know what he did for me. You may see something, but there's some stuff about me. There's some stuff about you that you know that God did. So I own my praise. I'm, I'm praising God in the midst of what I'm dealing with. It simply means if you're going to praise God properly, you got to own your praise. And notice that David says, I will. It's an act of your own will. It's not about what somebody else says. You know, you are not allowing anybody to mess up your praise. You are not let, let anything mess up your praise because God is good and he's good what? all the time. Your praise, your praise is, is proprietary and your praise is certainly practical. You got to praise God and recognize that what David said here is that his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And I don't know about you, but that's, I, I, that's, that's practical. My praise will continue to be in my mouth because God continually blesses me. As a matter of fact, every time I turn around, Brother Randolph, he keeps on blessing me. You see, I mean, if you think about it, as a matter of fact, in the Greek, that same word, think, uh, it comes from the same Greek word that means think. And so what well, we ought to recognize that when we start to think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for us, we ought to start thanking him. We ought to say, oh, thank you, God. We ought not wait till this one time of season when the world says it's Thanksgiving season. Because my brothers and sisters, he's been good to me all throughout the year. 365 days of the year, hour after hour, minute after minute, he's given me my next breath. So I will bless the Lord because and my praise is going to continually be in my mouth. It'll be practical. It'll be practical because I'm reminded over in the book of Acts, you read about how when Paul and Silas prayed, they were locked in, the Bible says, in an inner prison. That's the, that's the place where you couldn't get out. It was like solitary confinement. They, they were in the inner prison, but the Bible says a praise party broke out in the middle of the prison. Can you imagine being locked away? Being locked up, they shut up. But all of a sudden, you wouldn't think that they had anything to start praying. But the Bible says that they started to singing and they started to praising God. And my brothers and my sisters, I double dog dare you while you're in the midst of a troubling and trial. Oh, we know how to praise them when we come out. We know how to praise them when we got plenty of money. We know how to praise them when we got a promotion. We know how to praise them when we got a new car, a new house. And we know how to praise them when the blessing. But the question is, can you continually have his praise in your mouth while you're locked in, locked down, sick, or somebody lying on you talking about you? Can you still say, I will bless the Lord. The Bible says that when the praise party woke up, then the Bible says that the prison doors came unlocked. And I want to tell somebody, my brothers and my sisters, you can praise your way out of your circumstances. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. Which literally means to me, he sets up and dwells in the midst of your praise. And listen, you want to know how to get God's attention, put, put your faith in him and start praising him in spite of him and say, Lord, I thank you anyway. Lord, I thank you even though it's not like I want it, but I'm going to say, Lord, I thank you anyway. Your praise ought to be continually in your mouth. His praise ought to continue to be in your mouth. But because you, as you continue, to, that, that means it's perpetual. Praise is practical. But praise is also perpetual. That's what this psalm is simply saying to us. Giving thanks always, Ephesians, right? Paul said in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God 
and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the midst of this circumstance and these situations, my brothers and my sisters, I know we've had some tough times, some hard times, and we're going to go through some tough times. So just in case somebody say, well, I'm, my, my, time, my life right now is pretty good. I'm not having any issues, but I want to encourage you to put this one away in your faith file. Because how many somebody know that, uh, listen, this, this life is filled with swift transition. Not on earth been moved. In other words, that someone has said it like this. Storms, when troubles and trials are indigenous to this planet. And someone has said it, your life is really in a situation where either you are going into a storm or you're in a storm. Or somebody on the way out of a storm. Now you got to recognize, but storms are indigenous to this life. You will go through something. We might have better teach our children, teach them right now at a young age. And some of them even know about it. They're going through things because then you won't allow the devil to deceive you into thinking that this trouble is going to last always. But how many know this uh, trouble will not last always? You got to understand that David said also in that 23rd number, seven, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. You see, the devil can deceive us into cutting down on our praise, sitting down on our praise, then that can cause that spirit of what I was telling you about these last few Sundays is a spirit of depression will set on in on you. But when you start to praise God, even when you don't feel like it, has anybody been able to say, I praise him even when I don't feel like it because I know he's been good. I may not feel like it, but God is still good. But then praising God, not only my brothers and sisters, is proprietary, but it seems to be saying that praising God, as I said, is really personal. Because what David says in verse number two lets us know that this is a personal praise. Because he says, my, you see that personal poem down? That he says, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Not talking about anybody else's soul. I can't talk to you about your soul. But my soul, David says, but then he goes on to say, and because it's my soul. I'm going to promote God. I'm going to promote, not that God needs to be promoted, but I'm going to promote him in my life. In other words, I'm not going to let God be small in my life, but I'm going to, no, notice what he says here. It's right here in the text. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. What says to me that we ought to make, you know that thing called a magnifying gl glass? It, 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 what it does when you put it over anything, it makes it bigger. And, and, and that's what we ought to do when it comes to our God. We ought to magnify our God. Instead of always talking about how big our trouble is, how big our problem is, we ought to say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And, but, but let me, wait a minute, let me, he said magnify because he said, before he says with me, he said, I'm going to magnify him even if you don't. I'm going to talk about the problem solver instead of the problem. I'm going to talk about how big my God is instead of talking about how big my problem is. Because how many of you know, my brothers and my sisters, God is bigger than anything you got to deal with. Anything that I got to deal with, it's big. God is bigger than that. And so we ought to promote God in our lives. And then we ought to make it a public proclamation of praise. Because that's what he says here. When he says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now he's asking others, come on and get with me. I'm praising God. I'm promoting God. I'm going to give him the praise. And so I'm not going to pump you, but I'm going to remind you that you ought to give him the praise too. Because you got something to praise God about. You got something to rejoice about. When you think back in your faith file, as a matter of fact, if nothing else, you ought to praise him for you being here right now. Because you know there was some right now who would love to be in your spot. There was somebody here that's not here right now. There's someone who's sleeping. But we thank God you are here living and breathing and got another chance to give God the praise. So let us exalt his name together. This is a Thanksgiving season, and we are, we are inviting the afflicted and the helpless. Yes, those who are going through circumstances and situations. We're about to give out some Thanksgiving meals, but how many know that we're not just giving out just one meal? Because when we give out that meal, the meal is going to be gone within a matter of probably minutes. But then it's, it's not just what you do, but it's how you do it. You see, when you, when you take a meal to somebody, 
and you're saying, my brother and my sisters, I want to do you know, I want to introduce you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to know that you know the same God that I know because even in the midst of what you're going through, you may be homeless, you may be sickness, you may not have food in your house. I don't know what you're going through, but I want to introduce you to the Lord and Savior that I know because even when I'm going through, he, he makes when I'm dead sad, he makes me glad. You see, when I, when he, he'll make you run, ain't nobody chasing you. He'll make you cry, ain't nothing sad. He, 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 I recognize that the joy of the Lord he is my strength. And so we'll be like David. He was invited in his distress, his comrades. He was inviting those around him. Come on, bless the Lord with me. It, it, it's two desires that David moved him to initiate the worship service in that cave of Adullam. First, he longed to experience the power of lifting up the great name of the Lord and worshiping him with others in addition to the private worship. He wanted to celebrate his God with somebody else. You know, if you're enjoying something, if you're enjoying the worship, if you're enjoying the praise, you ought to want somebody else. You don't, don't be selfish about your praise. Don't be selfish about how you how good it makes you feel when you clap your hands, when you stump your feet, when you pray to God, when you lift up holy hands, and it makes you it gives a good feeling over you. But then also it blesses you because as you are blessing God, He's blessing you right back. And you ought to want to share that with somebody else. David, David, he, he longed to experience this power of lifting others in uh, others lifting the Lord up. But secondly, he wanted to uh, his dejected friends to know that God could do for them what He had done for him. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Y'all let somebody say, "Listen, it's a, it's, it's not just about me. God will do the same thing for you. Whatever, whatever you're looking at me, you saying, well, you got listen. God, this, he's the same God." Same God that blessed me, he'll bless you, my brother and my sister. He is no respecter of persons. Aren't you thankful that God is not respecter of persons? It don't matter if you're in the boardroom, you're the ghettos, or you're in the get -mos. It doesn't matter what race, color, creed you are. It don't matter what side of the tracks you came from. It doesn't matter. We're all precious in God's sight. God is concerned about the least, the lost, and the left out. He's concerned about the presidents and the CEOs, but he's concerned about those who are outdoors. God's concerned about everybody. He's concerned about those who are disabled. He's concerned about those who don't have physical sight. He's concerned about those who've been blinded by Satan. He's concerned about every color, race, and creed in this world. And my brothers and my sisters, no wonder David said, I sought the Lord and he heard me because David remembered how he was down, how he had been relegated to running from a king Saul. And so praising God is providential. And that's what he's saying here, my brothers and my sisters. It's a providential Providential praise that I lift up to God because I sought the is anybody in this house say I sought the Lord and I know what he can do for you because he did it for me David said I was this man in the text he said I sought the Lord he heard me now old patriarchs and matriarchs of old say it was it like this I love the Lord he heard my cry and he pitied every crumb long as I live and trouble why I'm gonna hasten to it is anybody in the Bethesda house and Anybody online, you're going to say, I sought the Lord and testify to somebody else how God will lift you up out of the uttermost to the guttermost. Is there anybody in the house going to know that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above whatever you could ever think or imagine if you just trust Him with all of your heart and lean unto your own understanding? David said, I'm praising Him because it's perceptional. I'm praising Him because I'm magnifying him. I'm praising him because it's pragmatic. The Bible says that the humble shall hear him. And yes, thereof and be glad. My brothers and my sisters, God will lift you up and he'll turn you around. He'll place your feet on a solid ground. And my brothers and my sisters, I thank God for the praise because there's a praise. I said it on last Sunday and I'll say it again. There's a praise on the inside. I just can't keep to myself. A holler going up to the Lord because he's been good. Is there anybody know he's been good? Has God been good from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same? He's been good. He's been so good that he went on a hill called Calvary. And on Calvary, he died. On Calvary, he gave his hands to the nails. On Calvary, he gave his feet to the spikes. On Calvary, 
raised him in the side. Yes, they did. On Calvary, he died. They put his hands in the locks of his shoulders. He gave up the ghost. They laid him in another man's tomb, wrapped him in another man's grave clothes. He went through the grave and went and preached and set the captives free. But early, somebody say early. I said early Sunday morning he got up with all power heaven and earth is in his hand that's enough to say I thank him I thank him anyway I say hallelujah anyhow because he's been so good I said he's been so good come on give God a hand up of praise God has been good I thank him for all that he's done. So I tell God in this holiday season, Lord, I thank you anyway. No, things aren't always like I want them. And listen, that's a word for us. We ought to teach our children that. You know, sometimes I had this discussion. Matter of fact, me and Brother Al was talking. I said, we'd like to be really good. And our children listen to it. We'd like to do good things for our children. And we want to bless them. But sometimes it's good to say no. Sometimes it's good to say, I know our children, they don't want to hear this. You know, no, I'm not going to do that. No. Because they need to understand, do like this little boy said it. I said, thank you anyway. It's all right to tell your children, teach them. They, 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 you know, you're going to bless them. You're going to bless them. But you got to teach them sometime. I'm going to say no. Because God tells us no sometimes. It is not reality to teach our children that they're just going to get everything they want. Every time they want it. Just because they know that you're good. It teaches them really to be ungrateful. And so we're responsible for what we teach our children. Because we ought to say Teach them to say thank you and I'm grateful for what you already have done. So even if God don't answer our prayers in an affirmative and say what we want and do what we want, we ought to still tell them thank you. You brought us from a Lord mighty long way. You saved my soul. You died on the cross for me. And at least I ought to say thank you. Your parents, you mothers, you birthed those children. Fathers, you're taking care of those sons and daughters. Grandparents, you've been good to your those grandchildren. It's okay to say no sometimes. And then teach them to still say thank you anyway. Amen. Is that all right? Come on, give God a hand up of praise this morning. God has been good to us. Come on and stand to your feet. Maybe somebody here this morning. Or somebody join us online. Somebody. Who may be watching even at a later time or date we want to offer christ to you we want you to know that you can receive jesus christ as your lord and savior in the midst of a pandemic even when things are not just like you want them to be that you ought to still tell the lord thank you because he's been good to you and i know sometimes that's hard for some people to hear because they say you don't know where i've been you don't know what i've gone through but God knows and he's calling out to you so we extend this invitation this morning if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior we, we offer him to you this morning he's calling out to you he's calling out to you for salvation first he wants you to receive him as your Lord and Savior because when you receive what he did on that cross, John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. He's calling to you. And maybe somebody during this time, you say, well, I'm saved. I know the Lord, but I've strayed away. I'm not. Maybe you're online. Maybe you're watching this. And you say, I'm just watching from afar. But I want to encourage you to come on back to the church. Come on back to the Lord. We love that you are live streaming with us. But listen, I'll say it again. You've been going to Walmart and you've been going to our gatherings. You've been all out everywhere else. It's time to come on to the church. Amen. 
Amen. I, I love that we are have the opportunity to live stream and people when they can't get to church or somebody around the world, it makes it an opportunity, but it's not a substitute for us coming together. Amen. There's a, isn't a, it's a blessing to be in the, in the room to be able to look around. If it were not a blessing that God wanted for us, he would not have said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Now, I know somebody said, well, we're assembling online. No, that's not the same. Come on now. You, you can gather, you can, you can log in online and again, I thank God. I'm not, I thank God for those who are logging in and, and we want to encourage you to, to do that. We praise and thank God, but we want to encourage you to know that we got room, we got room here for you. Amen. Amen. And so, but we want to thank God. We, we, we ask, and this is a time that we can come back because we don't want to be deceived by Satan who would, he would love for us to go everywhere else and still, and not come to the church. It's a trick of the enemy to try to make us feel like we can go everywhere else. But when it comes to the house of the Lord, that we have to be afraid. Because I'm not, he's not giving me the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. We, we, we got our mask on. Sound man, we got to get a shot so they can see us. We got, they got the mask, we got the mask on. And they, amen, those of them, you, you, can, you can see, you can come to church and you can worship the Lord. I, I like what my, my pastor, Dr. Dale Richardson said, and, he put it online. He said, I'm covered by the Savior. He said, I got my shot. I'm coming to the sanctuary. So I just quote him, amen. So I, I'm, we, we're covered by the Savior. Your children are going to school and you're going into the store when you need to. You're going, you put your mask on. I encourage those, amen. Get your shot. I got, I'm boosted up, amen. Anybody been boosted up, amen, amen. We believe in the science because God is, he's, he is in science. There's no science without him. And God blesses the doctors and the scientists to do what they do. And then we're going to still pray. And we're going to trust God. See, if you go to the doctor, you, 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 it's not mean that you don't trust in God. You take your medicine, it don't mean that you don't trust God. Amen? All right. All right. Now, somebody say I'm, I'm meddling, but I, I, I have to. Amen. This is my job. Amen. So that we can do what we need to do in the family of God. Amen? Amen. As we get ready to, amen, give, we want to give and we want to encourage you to give online as well as those who are in the house. We got three or four different kinds of ways you can give. You can give through Cash App and Give La Fly. You can give in person. Amen. Amen. You can come and certainly you can also mail it in. All you got to do is just utilize those opportunities that God has prescribed for you to be able to give. We want you to know that you can give. And so, so as we stand out of the building, lift up the one all everyone standing. John Luke 6 and 30 at our given scripture, the word of the Lord says, Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And running over shall men give into your bosom for the same measure that you make, it shall be get measured unto you again. Every head, uh, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that our eyes have seen, all that our ears have heard. We pray for the offerings, uh, the tithe that is being brought to the storehouse, that there might be meat in your house. And so, God, we pray now that we givers and we pray for those who don't have to give. God, you said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. For God, we come giving your tithe, your offering back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Certainly. As we're getting ready to go. But before we go, amen, we're thanking God for also, as you see on the screen, uh, put it back up there, Reverend. Uh, we are, as we said, uh, information concerning our Thanksgiving meals on wheels. Amen. And we are uh, really calling for all hands on deck. Uh, we need you uh, to assist and help in a lot of different ways. Uh, certainly, uh, we want you to be able to, uh, there it is on the screen, uh, also help in this effort and know that you want to be a blessing to somebody else. And so, um, Brother Al, amen, he'll come, amen. We have chicken, I think he'll, where did he go to? He'll be back in a few minutes, but we got chicken, certainly for those who will help us in the effort because we got to cook some cook some chicken amen amen i got a box of chicken but i also got a box of chicken sister meadow's got a box of chicken amen and those of you uh you're uh certainly don't mind cooking and you know you do a good job but we want you to and maybe if you don't cook it but you know somebody maybe you want to take it somewhere to somebody who will cook it for you we got enough chicken back there to give out but al i was talking about the chicken back there so you might want to come on up here amen we're just talking about how we're going to get that to those who don't I already have uh, there? But then 